Chalk Talk for episode 5 of the fall 2012 college sailing season. I'm Jane Mackey. And I'm Chris Love, live from New York. And I'm Eric Stork. Now it's time for the U.S. Sailing Weekly Giveaway. This week it's brought to you by Vineyard Vines. We have your choice of either a U.S. Sailing tie or a U.S. Sailing tote bag. And the winner is... Alex Jacob from Fordham. Congratulations. Congratulations, Alex. And wait, there's more. Next week, we have another giveaway for you. It's a gill dry bag. Now, this is really going to come in handy as the season starts to cool down and you need to take out more layers with you. It's free to enter. Just go to US Sailing, click Racing, then College, scroll down below the Chalk Talk video, and enter your info. For the weekend review, we start back in Austin, Texas, where UT hosted 10 teams for the Catherine Hammond. Big breeze caused capsizes, and uh, Texas A&M Galveston takes the win with the UT women, a close second. Pretty much just playing these shifts and um, making sure uh, not to get bad starts. Uh, the starting line was pretty crowded at times. We had the Stu Nelson at MIT, and I have a correction to make here. Uh, last week I said that the woman would be sailing in FJs and the infamous carbon fiber tech dinghies, but actually it was FJs and their fireflies this weekend. We had 18 teams, they got a full round robin in, and BC dominated with 13 wins out of the 36 races, really cleaning up in both divisions. Uh, the jumbos consistently follow in second. At Brown, we had the Hoyt Trophy, a warm-up for Nisa's qualifier to the ACC's. The regatta was dominated by very puffy and shifty westerly winds there at the Edgewood Yacht Club. In A Division, Yale's Graham Landy with crews Heather May and Chris Sagerbloom won by a very uh, impressive margin, 42 points total over 12 races. In B Division, senior MIT engineers Philip Crane and Stephen Drapko uh, won with 59 points. MIT got the win over Yale and Roger Williams. And finally, the PCCSC Single Hand Championships men's and women's at the Nationals venue at USC. And that's the last qualifier for this event, so now we uh, add those teams to this list. So next week we're going to do a full feature on the singles. We're going to see who we think are the ones to watch, our predictions, what the venue's going to be like. But for this week we cannot ignore MIT. So the feature this weekend is going to be MIT. Now, they have a, their recruiting class from a couple years ago is really coming of age. They had a great win at the Hoyt and potentially looking to do it again at the Shell. So we're really excited to welcome to the show co-head coach for MIT Beavers, Matt Lindblad. All right, Matt, well, thanks for joining us. Uh, congratulations on a good season so far and an even better weekend. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me. T tell us, um, what were you most pleased about with your team's performance this past weekend at the Hoyt, and does getting the job done in 420s mean anything more to you? Yeah, I think uh, the things that I was most proud about, I think, was that we had a full team effort. Um, we sailed uh, five different sailors in the event. Uh, we had a freshman fill in as a heavy crew for a little bit for four races, as well as our um, light air combos and uh, our B Division sailors sailed really well. Um, Phil Crane and Steve Dropcho uh, did a great job in B Division winning. Um, and it's just always nice when both divisions put together a great regatta at the same time. Now, MIT, you know, like many teams in college sailing, has had its ups and its downs. It appears to be kind of on the upswing um, with this senior class. Tell us the kind of the journey of taking a class with that much talent and bringing them to this level here where they're winning interconferences. Uh, it is. It's a good way to describe it, a journey. Um, but all of the kids on the team have worked really, really hard. Um, we have over 50 people on the team this year which is a huge benefit to the rest of uh, to the entire team. Everybody's working really hard together towards those same goals. 
and uh, we try to do a great job. Our student leadership, our team captains do a great job of communicating the goals and making sure that everybody feels supported and working towards those goals. Um, but from a more global perspective of a journey from a freshman to a senior and, uh, you know, translating that to on the water success over, uh, over the course of four years, um, I think everything that's built for people like Andrew and Phil and Steve and Keldon has come from other people investing in helping them progress. And I think that our team culture is really great about um, upperclassmen looking down towards the younger sailors and bringing them along, uh, as well as recognizing that those young sailors are the ones that are gonna challenge them in practices. Yeah, that's good to hear, um, Matt. It, it is all about the team atmosphere, right? But um, I guess we want to look at your, your seniors a little bit more, especially Andrew, um, Andrew Sommer, A Division skipper. What a week Le leading the engineers to, you know, the first big interconference win in, in some time and then um, being named to the 2012 ICSA all academic team. Um, he has a 4.0 in mechanical engineering at MIT, um, which it, which is phenomenal. So, can you speak a little bit to that? How how these guys can uh, can balance the workload at MIT and, and do so well in college sailing? Yeah, it really is incredible what um, as individual it, it, in, as individuals these. Uh, student athletes have accomplished and are accomplishing and their success on the water is just a tiny slice of their uh, accomplishments and honestly you would never know it uh, one of our uh, heavier alternates who is at the Hoyt today or this past weekend uh, received a scholarship and one of the astronauts who had walked on the moon uh, came to MIT on Thursday to present him with like one of those giant size checks scholarships as the top Aero Astro student at MIT. And, you know, he sent us an email at that day saying, uh, I gotta be late to practice because I'm accepting an award. Uh, and Andrew as well is one of the team leaders. He's a team captain this year. Uh, and uh, it's, it is incredible. Uh, it certainly makes coaching at MIT a, a very unique and enjoyable experience that, you know, you're, you're dealing with people who are, uh, you know, not just incredible uh, in their work ethic and their attitude that they're able to bring to practice, but they are the future leaders of America. And uh, it, it'll be a nice Rolodex uh, later on to have said that, you know, you've worked with these really spectacular people. Um, I, I guess thanks for joining us and, uh, and good luck for the rest of the season. It was great to hear from you. Great. Well, thank you very much, guys. We appreciate what you guys do in terms of uh, putting college sailing out there and really giving some of the context to uh, the great stories that we have to tell. As we do every two weeks, we check in with Meredith Pallison over at Sailing World. I had a chance to talk about the uh, new rankings coming out this week. Meredith, welcome back. Hey, Chris, how are you? I'm great, I'm great. How's things? Good, um, so I wanna tell you about a really cool uh, photo contest that we just launched at Sailing World last week. It's called From the Road, and it's a college sailing photo contest. So you can submit your best photos from a college sailing road trip to our website, Facebook, Twitter, um, or you can submit it via Instagram, and the best shot as selected by the editors and art staff over at Sailing World will win $500 and also be published in our College Sailing Guide uh, for 2013 in our March issue, which is pretty cool. So you can find out more about that contest at sailingworld.com slash college sailing photo contest. Fantastic. Glad to hear it. That'll be fun. Yeah. Um, forward to seeing lots of good shots. All right, we also have the rankings out uh, just yesterday. So let's get right into it. What do you see in the co-eds? Right, so in the fourth ranking of the season, we see Georgetown is still in first, and they got 11 of the first place votes from coaches. Um, but the other eight first place votes were spread out evenly between second place Charleston and third place Yale. Another interesting thing this week is that MIT's hard work has been rewarded and they have moved up into the top 10. They're now ranked ninth this week and they were previously ranked 13th. 
And we also saw the University of Vermont move up five places to 15th place this week in the co-ed rankings. Okay, so not a whole lot of change there, but some interesting moves. Um, what do you see on women's? Right, and the women's side of things, uh, interesting to see that Boston College and Navy actually swapped places from the last ranking. So this week, Boston College is ranked second and Navy is ranked fifth. And then uh, the other big move was that Roger Williams is currently ranked eighth. And last in the last rankings, they were ranked in the also receiving votes section. So this is definitely the highest ranking they've received all season long. Well, fantastic. Thanks for the update. We'll be looking forward to more rankings uh, as we move into the postseason. Great. Thanks, Chris. And happy birthday, by the way. Meredith turns 23 <laughs> this week. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Now the weekend ahead. Uh, the only interconference regattas this weekend are actually conference championships, so that's it. The regular season is over. Now we're in the postseason. That's right, Chris. So we have the Victorian Coffee Urn. Now this is the women's NISA qualifiers for the ACCs. They're vying for eight spots out of the 12 teams competing, and these are the 12 top um, in the performance rankings from last week. They'll be vying for these eight spots to compete against their counterparts from Mesa and Sesa. Uh, there are seven teams from Mesa already qualified and three from Sesa. And on the co-ed side, we have all three qualifiers for the Atlantic Coast Champs at KP. Uh, in Nisa, the top seven teams from the Shell Trophy at Brown will go on. In Mesa, the top eight teams from the War Memorial at Kings Point will earn a right to return to that site in a few weeks. And in Sesa, the top three from the Sesa Fall Dinghy Champs at Eckerd will get to head north one more time in a couple weeks. Coast Guard hosts the Nickerson, a good chance to see freshman talent from uh, around the East Coast matching up against each other. No upperclassmen allowed. So it's a tough pick for our predictions this week. We are going to make it easier on ourselves and just go with all of the, the co-ed qualifiers. So Eric, what do you think? Well, uh, the Brown Bears, the home team, let me down this past weekend, but I think that they're going to uh, make it happen this weekend. So I'm going to take Brown at the Shell. I've got Georgetown at the War. They sailed really well earlier this season at Kings Point. And I'm going to have to take Charleston in Sesa. Yeah, I can't, I can't disagree with Charleston and Sesa. I'm going to go with them also, Eric. Uh, I think that ODU is having a pretty good season, so I'm going to go with them. And lastly, MIT, after that feature story, well, what can you do? <laughs> well, I, I can't deny that, but I, I can't really believe this is coming from you. Leaving the door wide open, I guess I have no choice but to take Yale. Uh, in Mesa, I'll take St. Mary's, and in Sesa, I'll follow suit and play Charleston. Well, we've still got a few more weeks left in the college season. Let's take a look at this postseason schedule. This weekend, as we said, Conference Dinghy Fall Championships, as well as PCCSC and their final Match Race Championship qualifier. The following weekend, we've got men's single hands and women's single hands at USC and Kennedy Cup at Navy in the big boats. For the final two weeks of the season, we've got the Atlantic Coast Championships at Kings Point, the women's ACCs at Connecticut College, and the uh, Pacific Coast Champs at UC Santa Barbara. And in the final week, we've got the Match Race Nationals at Fort Worth Boat Club and the Timmy Angston at Chicago. So that's your Chalk Talk for this week. Join us this time next week when we're going to do a full preview for the single-handed championships. We'll also be drawing for the Guild Dry Bag. So good luck to everyone this weekend. Thanks for watching. Sail fast.